When you think about the words modern electronic ambient music, your mind might go to the all-time greats of the genre. Steve Roach, Tangerine Dream, Brian Eno. But when you look off into the world of YouTube, what you're gonna find is what I consider the modern masters of the genre. Martin Sturzer, State Azure, and even Andrew Wong or Jeremy Blake to some extent. But how do you make this kind of music? Well, that's why you guys watch this channel and your boy signs, I'm here to help guide you guys along the way. So in today's video, we're gonna do a modern electronic ambient track from start to finish so you guys can see exactly how this kind of music is made and you guys can apply these techniques to your own ambient productions, all right? The goal of these videos is twofold. Number one, I wanna help you guys get better at ambient music. Number two, I wanna let you guys know that my Patreon is the coolest place in the world. There's tons of extra content on there, preset packs, extra videos, tons of stuff that you won't find on this channel, and by doing so, you're supporting me as a full-time ambient music and content creator. You can join for as little as $3 a month. The link is in the description box down below. All right, so that being said, welcome if you're new, subscribe to the channel if you guys feel called to do so, make sure you smash that like button, and let's get into some modern electronic ambient music. All right, so here we are inside of Ableton Live 11. Now, the goal with this video is obviously to show you guys how to build a modern electronic ambient track from start to finish, um, but I just wanna press upon you that it's really not that difficult, um, and the some of its parts does sound complex, um, but really when you break it down, it's just simple waveforms with proper use of delay and filtering and reverb, and that's all that it is, okay? So it's sort of like unveiling the, uh, the mask here or behind the curtain, if you will. Um, it's really not that hard, um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna build upon these simple ideas and make it sound complex through, like I said, uh, proper use of effects and actual synthesis, all right? So we're gonna work uh, in 70 BPM today. I mean, that's a good place to start with this. Um, if you multiply like 60 or 70, uh, you know, by two, then you're gonna get like, you know, 120 and 140. So somewhere around that range um, is a really good place to start. Um, so let's just start at 70. And we're gonna pick a key. And that key, uh, let's see, I just literally pull around out of a hat. You can do minor, you can do Dorian. You can even do Lydian if you want. Um, let's just pick uh, B flat minor today. So we're gonna go with that. And then I get a lot of questions about this template. This is the utility template in Ableton Live. It's on Material, um, meaning that you can go buy it from us at material.bandcamp.com. It's called Utility. It was designed by Don Tyler, and a lot of people ask me, why do you EQ out these certain frequencies? Um, they're just trouble spots, and they, they really help shape the sound before it actually gets to the master fader. Um, so you can choose to turn on or off this EQ if you want. You don't have to go with this. Um, it does give you a utility uh, plug in there to adjust the gain staging before it actually hits um, any of the four buses, and then it's sort of like preventing you from uh, clipping the master fader in the end. It comes with a lot of different effects and it's a really great workflow and I've gotten used to it. I've been using it now for the past, I don't know how long, seven years. Uh, and it's really helped me improve my productions a lot by having proper workflow and proper gain staging most of all. So that's what I'm using here just to kind of like, you know, get that out of the way. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of set this whole track up by creating some sort of like intro and then we're going to drop it off a cliff create a simple sequence and then build off of that simple sequence, okay? So lately I've been using this synth and it has really captured my attention in my heart. I don't know why I love it so much, but it's just a great sounding synthesizer. It just does exactly what I want it to do. So if you guys haven't demoed this already, you should probably demo it. Uh, it's just a really solid sounding piece of kit, if you know what I'm saying. So I'm gonna grab a wavetable here and we're gonna start by making a pad. These wavetables I stuck in here are from my new Patreon pack 11 um, that's coming out on my Patreon. So if you wanna get these, um, you gotta sign up for the Patreon presets tier. Um, but they are really cool. I made them in Vital. Um, they're using the resynthesis technique. So what we're gonna do uh, is just build a pad. So A to Z, one to 10. It's just like, okay, let's, let's grab this and move the position slider around. We can loop it. We can adjust the tempo here. And then of course, adjust the filtering. Um, and I'm gonna switch this to low pass 12 to kind of give it a little more. All right, cool. That tempo's a little too fast for my taste. I'm going to slow that down. 
kind of give us a slow evolving pad, if you will, and then we're gonna um, up the attack here, up the decay, up the release, turn the sustain down for a little volume control. All right, add some unison here. Let's give like four or five voices and uh, up the detuning a little bit. And we're gonna stick the sub oscillator in here, turn the volume down, maybe turn it to like sine or sawtooth. Add the sub here. That's good. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. And the other thing that's been hot topic lately on our Discord page um, is this use of the span. Uh, so the span is a free plugin. Um, I know there's a paid version, but the span is a free plugin. Uh, it's just a spectral analysis tool. That's all that it is. Um, so if you put a span on the end of your chain here and you kind of look at it, um, mind you, this is after the EQ, so I can turn off the EQ. But this sort of gives you an idea of what your pad is sounding like, right? As you can see, we have some sub-frequencies that I probably want to filter out. Um, but with a pad, we don't really want to go past a certain range. I mean, pads should live um, around 1K. That's just like ballpark estimate. So I'm gonna lower down the cutoff here and just kind of give it a nice filter. And that sounded good to me. Now what we can do is just take an LFO and switch to sync and switch that to like, I don't know, 401 or eight over one. Let's go with eight over one. And we're gonna drag this target to here and start doing some filter movement and making sure that we don't go over that range. So I'm just gonna kind of bring this up. Maybe let's change that to like six over one. There we go. Cool, this is sounding good to me. We haven't even added any effects yet, but we're already in a nice, acceptable pad range, if you will, okay? Maybe that goes a little too far, so I'm gonna back that modulation up. And yeah, so great. That's a nice start. All right, so I've gone ahead and uh, recorded some notes in here, and I've also added some reverb and some delay. Um, these reverbs are well talked about on this channel. It's the Valhalla delay and Valhalla reverb. This delay uh, is set to, um, a ping pong delay dotted eighth note. Uh, this is the Valhalla delay, beautiful delay here. And Valhalla room reverb, uh, much talked about on this channel. 55 seconds decay time and 100% mix because they're both on send effects. So I've also gone ahead and inside of the hive patch, I've gotten rid of those um, lower frequencies by serial rather than parallel. So if you click the filter one button here on hive and put this into high pass, then we're getting a high pass uh, after the low pass, if you will. And as you can see, it just chopped off all those sub frequencies. Really great way to do that. So there you go. All right, nice sounding pad, good modulation. Um, and what we're probably missing here is some sort of bass frequency. So we can sort of like add that now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the loop while I create a bass. And we'll just grab Hive again. And let's make a bass. So, um, we can go sub here, sub there, and grab this, make it a triangle. And now if I go ahead and hit a key. So filter wise, uh, for my bases and my plucks, uh, I like to use 24 or four pole uh, filters. And then for the pads, you can go two pole or 12 dB. But 24 seems to be a nice sweet spot for the bass, especially because you really want to chop off those higher frequencies on the bass. Like you do not want to like introduce those into a bass frequency. So as you can see here, um, we're looking good, right? That's a nice bass response. And what you can also do is switch this to mono and um, you could even, this is kind of a cool trick, adding some voices onto a mono bass to kind of give it some more modulation. That's kind of cool, right? In Vital, I do this all the time. Look at it on the scope here. You also add some vibrato. You can add some subtle vibrato here to a bass. That's nice, that's a nice touch. The vibrato, um, by the way, the LFO here is down here on the bottom. So as you can see, if we up this vibrato, 
it really starts messing with it, but we can kind of get a nice slow rate to kind of give us that like hint that things are modulating, if you know what I'm saying. Okay. And then we'll add a mod envelope here and just give it a little thump. Right? That's resonance. And that's your bass. I'm loving that. Still doesn't have enough gravity. I'm going to um, maybe change this, this to Sawtooth. There we go. Mm, I like that. Okay. Cool. So, all right. So I'm going to hit record new on my push. Let's go ahead and record some notes uh, here on the push. Ready? Um, I'm just going to do it. Quick little count off here, and there we go. Ready? Five, six, seven, eight. All right, cool. Uh, some of those notes, uh, I was questioning whether I should be playing something else at that time, but you know what? That's okay. We're going to adjust those now. So I'm gonna switch the scale to A flat minor here, hit the scale, and let's just go ahead and dial this in. Nice. just this part. You guys can't see that, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. I'm, I'm good with that. So let's switch this to, let's say, quarter notes or even yeah quarter notes will work and then we're going to go ahead and control a and then control u and that quantized everything and that's looking good to me uh, there we go okay line it up line it up all right awesome and now we're going to uh set this as a loop so 16 bar loop and now we've got a 16 bar bass line that we can play with perfect bass line there and now um, let's start this on bar nine. So now we're getting some real bass frequencies in that. Sounding good. Maybe we can make this a long, slow attack. There we go. Nice. Make this sort of a bass synth. There we go. Yes, nice. We'll do some subtle filter movement here. Switch this to sync. Switch it to four over one. Yeah, maybe switch it to like five over one. If you switch something to five over one, then you're dealing with odd numbers and there we go. Yeah. Uh-huh. Lower the release down.
Nice. Okay, cool. Good. All right, now, one more subtle detail. Uh, I'm going to grab Serum here, and let's go ahead and grab Serum. And what we can do here on Serum, um, if you guys don't know, I'm sure you guys all know, Serum is one of the best sounding wavetable synthesizers ever made. And I say sounding as an emphasis there. Um, other synthesizers have now do exactly what Serum does, but Serum just still, quality-wise, bar none, um, sounds better than most of the other synthesizers out there uh, as far as wavetable synthesis goes, because that's what it does. It, it, that's its bread and butter. It doesn't really do anything else. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on oscillator B, lower the level all the way down, and then we're gonna go ahead and make an FM pad here by saying FM from B right here, and then turning this up. And now when I hit the keys here, you're gonna hear that uh, oscillator B, which is turn all the way down, is now frequency modulating uh, oscillator A, okay? That's kind of cool. And we can adjust the shape here and maybe say like just a sine wave. Adjust the octave. Okay, so you can play around. But you can see, you can argue it's a really glitchy, cool stuff out of this just by using FM. Right? The beauty of FM is this. So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to switch this to the synth bus and turn on some reverb. Maybe it has some delay to it and... I like that, okay? So let's go ahead and hit play here. Lower down the volume here. Let's adjust the envelope. Nice. Got a sub frequency here. Ooh, nice, there we go. Got a filter. Okay, being conscious of our frequencies and knowing. There we go. That's a little too far. That's a nice gong sounding. Okay. One, a second envelope and we'll um, modulate the filter with this. There we go. There. Bingo. All right, cool. So uh, that sounded good to me. Yep. And every once in a while, we'll do some like random like gong sort of style, you know, introduce that lower mysterious vibe into it. So let's go ahead and set this to one bar. We'll make a, I don't know, 24 bar loop or something. And we'll switch the scale here. And what was that note? That was, um, a sharp zero. Okay, so we'll go ahead and hit the draw mode and every once in a while, boom. And we'll go ahead and offset this. So we'll set this on three because it's not gonna change on three. We're gonna have the bass note start here and then that's gonna start there. Give us even some more reverb. Nice. Yep. And we'll go ahead and hit this on seven. Like this. So we're sounding good here to do our setup. So this is like, we could do some more like plinkety plink stuff, you know, like you could do um, some sort of raindrop kind of thing with synthesis, you know, ding, 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 ding. I mean, anything you want, let your, let your imagination just kind of take you there, uh, however far you think this can go, right? Uh, you could do this randomly, you could do it off time or something, like this could happen just every once in a while. I could even change the note here. So I'm just gonna set this at, say, 13, right? It's gonna happen at that point. I love that. Maybe add some more resonance to that filter, to that little reso to drive. Let's see what that does. Yeah, nice. I love it. All right, cool. So for the sake of your time, let's go ahead and start that simple sequence that I was talking about. So we're gonna get this all the way up to this point and then we're gonna drop out this bass frequency really just for a second. Let's see here. We're gonna drop it out just for a second and then we're going to start on this simple sequence. Now the simple sequence 
here's what we're going to do. We're going to just make a kind of four bar loop or even a two bar loop. And then we're going to evolve on that or elaborate on that as time goes on. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab Hive 2. We're going to throw it on this track and we're just going to go ahead and make a simple like simple pluck, right? And that's all, all we got to do. So let's just go ahead and add the mod envelope, um, take the sustain out of it, take the uh, decay and release up and the decay and release up on the mod envelope. And then what we're left with is this wrong track. Here we go. Just simple, right? So it's a simple pluck, right? With a 24, pa 24 dB low pass filter on it, okay? And we can change the octave what we're playing in, okay? Right? Boom, boom, and that, that's all that it is, right? And now we can obviously just kind of switch this to sync, switch this to like five over one and change the cutoff of the filter there. And so now we're left with just a simple evolving pluck that's gonna change over time, okay? Okay, but now the key is to start keying in the notes of what we wanna play. So let's go ahead and um, that's a little too high. So we're gonna go in the, the second octave and go to here, right? You gotta click the, uh, let's go ahead. Set there. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, boom, boom, boom. There we go. That's it. That's it right there. Uh huh. Just like that. Okay. And then we're gonna. I'm gonna lower this down one more octave. There it is, just like that, okay? And now we're gonna play off of this by using the proper delay, okay? So it sounds simple, but like I said, this is simple waveforms and simple sequencing techniques with the proper use of delay. Now watch what happens when I take this simple idea and really up the delay here. Check this out. See how you start getting rhythms beyond the rhythms, right? And this delay here, by the way, um, this is sort of really important to note, is that this is the delay that I've been using currently, and this is one of the best delays I've ever run across, ever. Uh, it's Timeless 3 by Fab Filter. And the reason why this is so cool is because not only do you have like, some really cool filtering options and you've got like dynamics and lo-fi on here, but you also have control over the individual taps. And that's very important. Why is it important? So you can sort of really start interplaying off of your notes themselves. So uh, good examples of this would be um, on the new release from Hinterland, which just won the Shawwell Award for Ambient Album of the Year. That was on our label, Exosphere. That album made great use of delay where the delay almost creates rhythms beyond the rhythms, uh, if you know what I'm saying. So a note plays and then immediately you get a slap back and then it starts fading out and kind of degrading over time. But the whole point is, is to create further rhythms off just simple ideas, okay? So you can control the individual taps left and right here. Um, and this custom preset was made by Don. It's called Beyond the Horizon. So we're sort of like in our lane here, but check this out. Right? And so I've designed that pluck. I mean, you saw how fast I designed that pluck. It was just like, okay, move the filter, use a 24 dB low pass filter on it, combine it with the pad, right? And then we're gonna introduce back our bass here. Watch this. Perfect. And that's it, right? So we're gonna what we're gonna do here 
Oh, this one's gorgeous. What we're gonna do here is we're going to reintroduce um, all the elements and then we're gonna kind of elaborate on this. Now, I made this a loop here, but what you can do is just sort of duplicate this because what we're gonna do is kind of, Martin does this a lot in his music. And shout out to Martin, I love your music, bro. Um, I'm so happy that we get to work together and just do this for real, like, <laughs> you know, as a real time collaborative thing. Um, it's a really exciting time uh, to be making this kind of music and to be on YouTube, um, putting it down for all of you. So the point is, is that in Martin's music, he often changes something over the course of like, say 16 bars. So you'll hear something that happens over 12 bars or so, but then on the, on the last four bars, something different will happen. And that's how he evolves sequences. So it's very taking very simple ideas and um, translating them in something that sounds really complex. He does that with delay, he does that with note usage, and he also does that with the filtering. All, every once in a while you'll hear a couple notes just poke out of the filter, and that's a really cool technique that you can use as well. So um, let's go ahead and make the 16 bars, and then on the 16th bar, say the bar, we're gonna do something different. So it's gonna go, and then boom. Bing boom. Right? Just like that. I mean, that's as simple as it gets. So let's go ahead and do that here on the last, the very last bar. Yeah. That's, that's nice, okay, cool. So now what we have here, if you just hit Control J, now you have a 16 bar loop with just a subtle variation on there. Now we can go as far as we want with this, um, but that's a good place to start, all right? So I'm gonna switch my bars back to 220, there we go. And now we have a simple 16 bar loop that we can say, all right, let's go ahead and loop this 16 bars, okay? I love this. Very nice. I'm gonna change this one. I think I made my point clear though. So I'm gonna make this an eight bar loop and then we're gonna change it on the seventh bar. So that's, that's a good idea. All right, so here we go. We're gonna crop this clip. There it is, all right? Seventh bar coming up. Right, okay, cool. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so now we have sort of a central idea. And what we can also do here is say, all right, let's go ahead and play off of that with the filtering, because every once in a while, we're gonna get filtered. Now you can do this a couple of different ways. You can either do it inside the actual patch itself, where, um, you could use like say the function generator, like do some crazy thing or, you know, like I had, like I said, I have this on five over one now. It's really not gonna get over that certain level unless I tell it to. So you can use automation um, inside of your DAW itself. I could hit A here and just switch it to Hive. And then I could say, well, the cutoff could be modulated every once in a while. So we could do that. Um, we can configure this and say, all right, cutoff here. Now it's there. And now we have a cutoff control. So when that, actual thing happens, okay, the actual the actual thing. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the um, V key here. Let's go ahead and hit V, take it off B, and then like this, and then watch this. It's gonna peek out just like that, okay? So let's, let's see if this works. I don't, I, hopefully it's gonna work, I don't know, for the sake of uh, simplicity. Right, okay, so when that, event happens, then you're gonna get the filter opening up. Now this is very simple to do, and it's also very effective. Not only that, you can duplicate the automation over time. So now we have that automation that's just repeating. So every time that thing happens, that one thing, um, it's going to open up the filter, okay? This is a very simple idea, but if you understand this idea, right? On, on a simple level, it's like, okay, I could take that really far. So this kind of advice goes a long way, goes a really long way. And we could do that again. I mean, we could randomly do that. So let's, let's go ahead and do this. So we'll randomly do this one. And then every once in a while, maybe we'll do like this. 
and then it pokes it out there, and then um, we'll poke it out even again here. Let's go ahead, and now we can make a longer, like randomized sort of like modulation uh, curve, if you will. So now look, now every once in a while, it's gonna go here, and we're gonna get this. Let's go ahead and listen to it. And then, right? And then these notes are gonna pop out. Yes. Yes, all right? So, you can really understand now kind of the secret behind the whole thing. It's using creative ways to sort of evoke the imagination through simple usages of just delay, filtering tricks, reverb, simple sequences. <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad that I made this video because now I'm starting to work things out in my head like, wow, okay, this is it, all right? All right, now let's, let's go ahead and we'll make a companion piece to this. We'll make a companion sequence to this one sequence. So how are we gonna do that? One thing that you often hear in that style of music is the usage of say 16th note sequences, all right? And that's gonna go along with what we already have, which is our say dotted eighth note sequence here. And it's gonna really enhance what you already have. So it's gonna build complexity off of a simple idea, all right? So let's go ahead and draw in a MIDI clip here. And we'll go ahead and look at it here. And we can just sort of, we, because we're in scale, we can go ahead and key in some some notes here. We can just go, all right, well, let's say boom, um, boom, boom, boom. Uh, and we'll add a synthesizer to sort of like give us a general idea of what we're doing. And let's go ahead and hit the mod envelope, lower that, lower that. And we'll go ahead and here we go, just like this. All right, so now we have just a basic pluck, right? But what we have here is a pluck that's going almost a double time of the other one, all right? And then we'll go ahead and hit the headphone button so we can hear it. almost want to sort of introduce like a call and response to the whole thing. So that second sequence could be the response to or the call and the other sequence can be the response. So listen to this, we can, we can tie these things together, listen. I wanted this to go even longer. There. Ah, yes. Okay, cool. So this could be our little thing. Now, what we can also do here to really kind of like play with this is we can say, this is just gonna be a one bar loop. And I do this all the time now, is set the velocity here to something that's very purposeful, all right? And the reason why I say that is so you can repeat it, all right? It's not like you just hit kind of like, you can either select them all and hit randomize, but what that's gonna do is give you a random velocity value every single time. That's kind of not what we want. We want a very pattern-like velocity level that we can repeat over time, and then um, we can sort of change that and allow the velocity to do different things on the synthesizer. So now we've gone ahead and say, all right, this is a one bar loop. Um, now we have a cool one bar loop. Now listen to this when I hit the delay. This is gonna really, take this track in orbit. So we're gonna go ahead and put this through the synth bus and add some reverb here. And now what I'm gonna do before I hit play is go back onto Hive and there's a vo dedicated velocity 
knob underneath the amp envelope. Surprise, surprise, guess what that does? It has velocity affect the amp, which is the most common use of velocity. I love this, I love this because it makes my life way easier. Um, I could also set this to velocity and drag this over and now we could have the velocity affecting the cutoff here. Just kind of give it a little bit more, you know, movement if you will. Now check this out, listen how cool this is gonna sound with the reverb, with the delay, and we've already keyed in our notes. Gorgeous. Okay, now we can also put um, this into sync and um, make it five over one and drag this over. And like, like I said, simple waveforms. I have used almost nothing but sawtooth here today. Sawtooth and signs and uh, like one wavetable on the pad and that's it, right? So if you can get that kind of like methodology and idea behind, you know, everything that it really does, you know, the constituents break down to very simple waves and very simple ideas, but the sum of its part is very complex. And uh, that's the cool thing. Mm. Keep an eye on those frequencies though, okay? Next time that filter opens up, I'm gonna watch it here on the span. I don't know why I like blue, I just like blue. All right. Okay, so I'm, I'm conscious of that, therefore I can adjust my modulation accordingly. Ooh, I love it when that bass hits. It's so nice. Mm. We'll drag this over. There we go. Now we're cooking. Nice, we have loops here to play with, and now the arrangement becomes even easier because we can sort of like dynamically just move these things in and out. You can flatten it, you can start doing fades and stuff, but the idea here has been set. Like the intention of this track is now very clear. Oh my God, we can introduce that FM thing again. <laughs> <laughs> nice! <laughs> oh my goodness. I love it, I love it. Ah, oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. Wow. All right. Let's add one more track. Okay, let's add one more. Cause I'm having fun here, I'm having a good time. So let's go ahead and add like a lead. Kind of a mono style lead, you know, you can do this a bunch of different ways. Let's do it in Vital, cause it's free. And it's fun, and why not? So let's go ahead and up the attack, sustain, release, decay. And we'll go ahead and add some unison here. Make it a sawtooth. Go factory, make this a basic shape. Lower the volume down here. Add the filter. Put both of those through the filter. Lower the resonance down. 24 dB. And we'll take another envelope and make that the filter envelope. Go ahead like this, like this. And lower that down there. Actually take the sustain out of it, take the K. Make this the filter envelope, so it's going to open and close, depending on how much we want. Add a whole generous amount of reverb to this. Some delay, okay. And I think this is going to sound like this. Let's go ahead and uh, start recording. Right? 
So we can even have this be in mono, like it could be like a mono, like when are you, you know, that kind of thing, but I kind of like this drifty floaty. It's just a sawtooth and a sign combined. Nothing crazy about that with some unison on it. We can do a third oscillator, send that to another filter and do something different there. Turn on oscillator three and do something different. Add a wavetable there. We'll go Patreon pack 11. Up to 3D, there we go. Okay. All right, that's a modulation. Mm. Love it. All right, we got it. We got a nice lead going on here with some extra little. Listen. <laughs> Salt Bay, oh my god. So, you understand? Simple waveforms, simple techniques, all right? Let's add one more final touch. One more final touch, just for fun, okay? We're gonna add one of these sequences from my new Patreon only preset pack, all right? This is Patreon pack eight, and I made a bunch of these cool sequences here that could be a really nice addition if done correctly. So, lower the synth butts, lower this down, add a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and draw out a note here. And let's go ahead and just pick one at random. We'll say, I don't know, A sharp number two, drag it all the way over. adding another dimension to our sound. Right there, yeah. Perfect. Yes. Yes. We can even up the octave here. Let's up the octave. Let's up the octave to uh, A sharp three. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. You see? Simple waveforms, simple ideas, simple techniques, sound production techniques. Proven. When you do something time and time again, eventually it will become second nature to you. So at first glance, I know this can seem complex, but if you really just practice and try and try, you're gonna you're gonna get it. You're gonna get it so much that one day all of you are gonna submit to some fair next year. I know you are. So just like, let's get on with it already, boys and girls. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. It has truly been a pleasure. We've gone on a journey together, and you guys can see exactly how this kind of music is made. Check out my Patreon. And as always, keep your heads in the clouds and your feet planted firmly on the ground. My name is Chris from Signs of Life, and I'll see you all on the other side.